can't remember if this is a T-Rex arms video, T-Rex labs video, T-Rex armory video. Ah, oh, T-Rex labs video. So today I want to talk to you about terrain association, which is a relatively easy thing to do when there are landmarks like little creeks and things that you can find on your map and easily determine roughly where you are. Helps if you have a compass. But uh, specifically, I want to talk about contour lines and larger topographic features like the valley that we are in now and the hills that are on each side and being able to see these things on a topographical map, read the contour lines, associate them with the terrain that you see around you and navigate that way without GPS and other things. This is a foundational skill that is really important as you develop the other parts of land navigation. And I'm talking to you about it today because there's kind of a ticking clock, uh, at least for those of us that live in the Southeast. So being able to read contour lines is something that's really simple. You probably already know how to do it. You just have to get better at it. Kind of like in the same way, uh, I can kind of read music by finding, you know, middle C, and then counting up the lines and knowing what notes are. Uh, but that's not really the same thing as reading music, being able to read music while you play music. And reading contour lines is sort of the same thing. Now, I'm really good at contour lines and taking the two-dimensional representation of three-dimensional topography and building those models in my head because I spent many years as a 3D animator. That's a big part of what I did. But also when we were doing uh, the original holster designs inside of CAD and then doing CAM, the way that we control the CNC machines is also contour lines. So I've been doing this for decades, but being able to do it in my head in 3D model space is a little bit different than looking at the map and equating it to the actual landscape. That is something that you need to learn by getting outside and experimenting, but you do need a few of the basics. So I'm going to cover some different types of terrain features. We're going to look at the topo lines that will be created by those three-dimensional shapes. And to do that, uh, I'm going to have to get somewhere just a little bit darker. All right, now that we're in this slightly darker room, we can turn on the hologram generator and uh, I'll dust off some of those 3D animation skills to build us some graphical representations that I hope you think are helpful. Uh, this right here is the two-dimensional contour lines of a very simple conical hill, perfect like a volcano. And then over here is the three-dimensional representation of that volcano. Now, technically, uh, nothing is this perfect, so we'll add a little bit of complexity to it. But you understand exactly how this works. This is just kind of a refresher. One of the things that you're going to want to do as you do this terrain association, as you read maps, is determine the exact elevation of places. And the way that contour lines work, it's kind of dependent on the map, but they are individual elevations. Sometimes they are separated by 10 meters. Sometimes they're separated by 40 meters. Sometimes it's feet. Sometimes it depends on the scale of the map. Sometimes Sometimes it depends on how dramatic the terrain actually is that they represent. But the peaks of hills are always tricky to figure out because they're always taller than the tallest possible ring. And based on the size of that ring, you can kind of determine maybe roughly what a good guess would be towards the height. You don't know the exact height unless it is marked. The peak of a hill is marked on civilian maps pretty rarely. It's only if it is a specific mountain peak, it's somewhat notable, it's a tourist attraction or whatever. On military maps, it's different. Lots and lots of hills are marked with peaks and elevations. And the reason for that probably has to do with indirect fire and various other uh, identificational purposes. Super handy, just not as common on the civilian maps. Now, after we have understood our hill height, let's look at the different slope types. You can have a convex slope, you can have a concave slope, and it's really clear. The closer the lines are together, the steeper it is. Uh, and so when lines are really, really close together uh, or touching, that's when you know that you have a cliff. Now, hills are usually not right next to each other all by themselves, unless they are volcanoes. So let's have a string of hills together, and this is making us like a ridge line. Now, a ridge line is gonna be made up oftentimes of many little tiny hills, and the slight depressions in between them are called 
saddles. Uh, when you see these on maps, this is basically what they look like in real life. And then the opposite of a ridge line is, of course, a valley. You're going to have uh, peaks on either side that come down. And oftentimes, valleys are pretty clearly marked because they've been cut by erosion, so they're very distinctive at the bottom and they often have water at the bottom. Now, oftentimes you have slightly less defined valleys called draws, where as the water is coming down, it cuts smaller valleys on its way down to that stream bed. And then you also have the opposite of that. The humps uh, in between the draws are called spurs. And probably the most notable spurs on any mountain would be uh, the lonely mountain where Smog the Desolate uh, had his hoard of treasure. We're all very familiar with that topology, of course. But, uh, hopefully, this is the sort of stuff that you run into a lot. Now, there's a couple of things that are a little bit uh, rarer. Oftentimes, when you see uh, these concentric circles, it is a hill, but sometimes it's the opposite of that. Sometimes it is a depression. And older maps and printed maps usually put these little lines on the side to show that the, the hills are, or the circles are actually going down in elevation instead of up. But a lot of times when you're using apps on your phone, uh, the topo lines, the contour lines are not drawn by a cartographer. They are generated automatically from the different grayscale values of digital elevation maps and and oftentimes those lines are not there. So you kind of have to use uh, the surrounding topology and geography to figure out the context of whether that is going uphill or downhill. And then sometimes you see man-made stuff uh, on your maps as well. For example, uh, when people cut roads through an area, you will see cuts going through hills, and then you also see parts of valleys filled in. Generally on the map, you can see that because you know, the road is marked. But sometimes the human features are still visible in the contour lines themselves. So hopefully these graphical depictions of things are helpful to you. Uh, this is exactly the sort of thing that I wanted to see when I was first learning this. And so it was, uh, it was probably fun to make, I haven't made it yet. We'll check it out. And now you can connect the dots between the 2D lines and the 3D geometry that they represent. So that when you're out in the field, you can either look at the actual topography and consider in your mind what sort of two-dimensional contour lines would be created by that geography, find them on the map, and then you know where you are. Or if you know where you are and you're plotting your course, you can look at contour lines on the flat map, figure out what geographic features you're looking for near your objective, find those in three-dimensional space, and plot your course to that objective. But these are only two of the dots that you need to connect. These are only the basics. This is only the really simple foundation to a skill that you still need to build, and you're going to have to do it yourself. Now, my original plan for this video was to shoot the entire thing outdoors with no graphics whatsoever, just find all the geographic features that we just talked about in the real world, show you what they look like, show you the actual topo maps, and let you connect the dots that way. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that that probably doesn't help. For the same reason that uh, most of us uh, think about Morse code the wrong way. When I was a kid, I tried unsuccessfully to learn Morse code by memorizing this chart right here, which I think all of us have seen before. The problem was when I then heard Morse code with my ears, I used the visual part of my brain to transform it into visual representations of dots and dashes, then I visualized the chart, then I manually converted it into visual letters, which I then read to try to understand the meaning. That's too many steps. You need to be able to train your brain to hear the dots and dashes and use the listening part of your brain to transform that into the actual meaning without using all this other uh, transformational step stuff. And I think that reading topo lines or contour lines on topographical maps is kind of the same way. You don't need to transform it into this, into that, into the other thing. I think that you just need to get out into your own landscape, look at your actual terrain, look at the, uh, the actual contour lines that correspond with them and do it that way. Don't, don't think about what my particular terrain looks like, just do it yourself in your own neck of the woods. And hopefully those uh, visualizations of the 3D animation did help you get the process started, but now you need to go out here into the actual outdoors and figure it out for yourself. 
So now that you've had this refresher on how the contour lines work, how to read the topo maps, here's the assignment. Go outside right now and do it. Get CalTopo or some other app on your phone so that you can actually see where you are and see the lines that are there and look out over the lay of the land. And for those of you who live in Tennessee or the Southwest like I do, you don't have much time. By nightfall, these hills are gonna be swarming with ticks, jiggers, poison ivy, briars, and other undergrowth that is so thick that you can't even see your hand in front of your face, let alone what the uh, actual hillsides are doing. So I want you to start off in easy mode. Right now, you can see almost everything. This hill, that creek, it's all extremely clear. I can see a reasonable way into the distance and start off with your GPS turned on so you can see your actual location in Cal Topo. Then, as the undergrowth appears, it's a little harder to see what's going on, difficulty will increase. Turn off the GPS mode, find yourself on the map by using the terrain features. That's the skill that you're really wanting to develop. So, get the app on your phone, get outside, do the homework assignments. I'm serious. Are you, are you still watching the video? Put your shoes on and get outside. I'm not kidding. <laughs>